Gives it to Jenkins for the championship. Left me muted there. Welcome back, folks, to a special edition, March Madness edition of The Bounce. I got a squad with me today. We got my usual groups, Keebs, Kev, and I use finest. Nate, how are we doing today, fellas? So good. Nate, welcome aboard The Bounce, brother. How are you doing? And I see you got to uh, avoid our shoey for one more night, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, I also work at Traders tomorrow, so there's that too. But uh, I, shit, I can even hop on on you know old Hani later in this week. But doing pretty good. I've got a seltzer from Hawaii, so I think I'm doing okay. Yeah, you're doing not too bad. I will give Nate credit. He he went out of his way to announce today that he couldn't do the shoey live tonight because there's carpet in the room he's in right now. And if you've ever done a shoey before, you know that it is a complete and utter mess. So I will give credit where credit due is due and respect for it. Keeps, how you doing tonight, man? You're quiet over there. I'm doing good. Um, March Madness wise, I'll just give a little hint into my insight. Duke was not given a good, uh, was not, the cards were dealt against our favor. So um aside from that doing good um doing good on sports betting uh if you're not in the discord make sure to join that i'm trying to get the plays in there as i take them not after i take them but i went on a nice little run yesterday and today so um it's been pretty good been pretty good run for you (laughs) um show tonight is all madness pop in the comments if you got anything we're gonna go section by section each part of the bracket talk it through our favorites our upsets who we like who we hate <clears throat> duke uh, oh sorry Keebler and Trevor, who's not <laughs> here at the moment um and uh we got a few players we're gonna highlight so we're gonna we're gonna come out with a bite-sized champion today folks so get ready so first off though i do want to discuss the fact that uh the sycamores got left out Nobody wants to see a 40-point Virginia team. It's disappointing that they left the trees out. Also, quite disrespectful here because the player that they used in this picture, Cam Henry, graduated last year. He is not on this year's team. Oh! So as much as I love the kid, I can't believe they couldn't put one of the current guys on the team, maybe one of the five guys that was an all-conference player. Oh, my God, Um, dude. Some... Some intern in charge of this graphic wow. really messed up, and I'm not happy about it. I think it's quite disrespectful to them, considering yeah, that, they're the third team left out. That didn't take very long to get right. I, I I have some experience, you know, whipping together some thumbnails and whatnot. And quick, uh, quick uh, roster search would let you know that not he's not on the team anymore. Yeah, I, I mean, and it's not that hard to filter your Google search by most recent either, just to make sure. Uh, and again, you also happen to have a, uh, you know, you had, you had cream Abdul Jabbar, you had mm-hmm. a memeable player that everyone recognized. How did you not go with Avila there or one of the, what they have, mm-hmm. uh, f- six players make yeah. all conference. So yeah. You, you couldn't have Five guys all guys. conference and then the sixth man of the year. So you couldn't That's hit, right. you had a really good shot of, you know, six guys that play major minutes. We couldn't pick one of them. No, I think it's, uh, an embarrassment and uh, kind of just how the NCAA really treats the little guys right now. You never see it happen on by size sports. I promise you that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. We had the Kareem Abdul Jabbar thumbnail ready to go. We were ready for it. We didn't get it. So disappointing. Uh, we all wanted to see the small guys in. That's how we want it. But such is life. So before I get into the bracket, uh, Nate, do you have any comments on your losers getting whopped by the corn suckers last weekend in the tournament? <laughs> Well, let me just say corn in Indiana is better than corn in Nebraska. Mm, so not last weekend least, it wasn't. Uh, well, you know, I, I'm not going out of my way to eat Nebraska not-so-sweet corn. Um, I, mean, I could go on on corn all day, but um, not really surprised, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, 
I was kind of expected. I mean, they kind of just super Stuck. mediocre most of the year. And, yeah. Um, just at this point, I just, I think this is probably going to be what's going on in the future. We'll get, uh, some team that you should be really familiar with, James, in Nebraska football. I mean, that's basically what I they've back. become. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I would agree. I think that's a perfect, perfect example of what they have become. Um, I mean, I just, I just don't know if they're ever going to get back to, you know, what it was before. Um, I, I personally think, um, you know, just as an IU fan, it needs to be somebody that is not connected to the program in the past in what's whatever form or fashion. I mean, I know Dusty May, I, again, Mike Wooden isn't, you know, fired or Woodson is not fired at this, mm-hmm. at this time, right. but um, I just, you know, being living in India and still, you know, having some connections in Bloomington, I just really think you need to cut the cord to the past at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're just they're It's literally like Nebraska football, just hinging on to the past and bringing former players back, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just, it's not good up there. It's if you're getting walloped by Nebraska, most people are going to think it's football. It's not, it's basketball. You guys should guard Kase, by the way. He's really good. And you guys haven't figured that out yet. Still, he's still raining threes. Right oh, now, nobody, right. nobody's figuring that out. And then <laughs> with losing Liam Mc, McNeely, you know, not looking too good in the future. Nope. Oh, there he is. John pops in. Go for <laughs> snubbed, he said. NIT bid for the Golden Gophers, folks. Johnny Boy. Welcome. Thank you for joining. All right, let's get to the first region, folks. In also, I don't know, I don't know what order these are in. So we're starting in the Midwest. Oh, yeah. Go big red. To, anyone, red. to anyone sweating with me, the heat pulled it back to within three. So Ooh, Keeb's got a big NBA bet going on right now. He's gonna be buying dinner when he hits this one. Oh, I'm gonna be buying a nice spaghetti bolognese and <laughs> fancy, fancy man. Fancy. No, man, you, uh, you got to get some gnocchi, brother. Get That is where your pasta tastes should lie. Get some nice, tasty gnocchi. I love Ooh. gnocchi. gnocchi what's, so that one, what's that one type of pasta? It's like pastini, pastina, something, something like that. And it's like, oh, the little, it's like the little balls, like very little. And it's just it's I know, mad. I, I know what you're talking about, but for some reason I can't remember the name of it. But I think it's pastini. Yeah. But... Mm-hmm. Maybe we need to make an Italian pasta show on this network. <laughs> um, uh, Nate, as our resident Big Ten fan, I'm going to start with you at the top. Does Purdue have any chance of losing to a 16 again this year, or are they going to follow Virginia and win the whole thing? Um, I think, you know, just looking at my bracket here, they they get – I mean, Montana State's, you know, come on fire of late, but they get um, two of – what I consider the weakest teams in in the bracket. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, I would probably take Montana state over Howard and Wagner, but um, if Grambling somehow wins that, I mean, I just don't think Grambling's got the chops to take care of it. Uh, However, I do have Purdue losing in a rematch to Gonzaga. Um, I think Keeps is going to have an argument there. Probably, but um, I just, you know, after, especially uh, I'm I'm fully biased too, so you know, take it as is. But just after watching them, you know, over the past couple of games of the Big Ten tourney, I mean, you know, the let's be honest, officiating from the Big Ten to the tourney is going to be drastically different. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, Edie, Edie does get fouled quite a bit. I'll be honest with you, but you know, some of those calls are going to go away. Um, I don't think he's going to get away with some of the offensive fouling you know that you couldn't consider i mean really to me you know i i don't think those guards are going to be as consistent as they've been um and i you know let Edie get his 20 25 points but really it's the same situation as you know in the women's bracket with iowa just let clark get her points take sure, care of everybody else, else. Mm-hmm. i mean have they lost in the semifinals to Wisconsin because their guard play, because Braden Smith fouled out. He was in foul trouble most of the game, wasn't any good. Um, Kev, Keebler, do you guys got any 
any thoughts on Purdue? Are they going to walk through? I, you guys think through the first round, I think it'll be a cakewalk for them. Um, I do think Edie's a free throw merchant. So, like Nathan was saying, when he doesn't get some of those calls that he's been getting, it might have a little impact on his mental or the team's momentum. But um, that being said, I don't think they'll have any trouble this year against a, a sixteen. At least mm-hmm. I hope. At least I hope. No not. chance. Yeah, uh, I'm with you, Keeb. There's no way it happens again. Um, I know that it's, uh, I don't know, Purdue's kind of a meme, aren't they, at this point mm-hmm. when it comes to March? It's like, okay, at what yep. point will Purdue choke? And uh, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I think they are going to be sweating immediately in that second round, depending on that matchup. But uh, I th- I think maybe, maybe Purdue will finally get this whole, uh, you know, monkey off their back so to speak maybe this is the year that they stop being of the laughing stock of basketball Ooh. in march perhaps it's Preston certainly says. not going to be a 16 to 1 upset not again mm-hmm. uh anybody got a hot take on utah state tcu tcu super athletic utah state out of the mountain west who was ultra disrespected in the ranking in the seating any any preference there we got a coin flip game anybody gonna take a hard stance I mean, I think that's going to be the best matchup in the first round in the Midwest Regional. Mm -hmm. Um, I got Utah State taking care of business just because, you know, I'll be honest, I haven't watched a lot of TCU basketball. um, But to me, just like giving a little look-see, it doesn't seem like they've been the most consistent. Um, You know, and Utah State's got some of their own issues that they've, they've gone through as well. Um, but I like, you know, a team that came together. I mean, because Utah State, I believe, last year, you know, in that tournament team, none of the starters came back. Um, yeah, and, it's a different coach. It's a whole different team. Correct. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I think especially with the disrespect that they got, I think they're playing with some house money here. Um, but, again, I also wouldn't be surprised to see TCU take care of business on Friday night. Mm-hmm. I, the next pot is the one I'm very intrigued by. So I I know there's – Nate, was it you that said you had Gonzaga beating Purdue? Yeah. I'm going to hand the floor to Keebler because I know that's not how he thinks this is going to go. <laughs> so we talked about a pre-show. I think McNeese takes it uh, against Gonzaga. I think – Will Gonzaga. Wade loaded team, 30-3 think- or something like that. I think McNeese is catching fire at the right time, um, and Gonzaga just become – is – in my opinion, a renowned choker, especially when they've been known to get like the one, two, three seed and then choke out, except for like that one run that they went on. Um, I don't know. I think that the competition in the in March is just going to be better than the competition that they face during the year, and it's going to show in this matchup. I, I have one bracket with Gonzaga taking it, but um, I have five brackets total, so I'm kind of riding McNeese on that one. So we've got a 1-1 tie. So Kev's got to break this tie. Nate, what were you going to say there, brother? I was just going to jump in. I mean, you know, McNeese has got a good team, and and Will Wade is, you know, with all his faults being at LSU, is a good coach. But, I mean, you look at their, you know, you look at their their schedule. Um, The Southland is not a very good conference to begin with. Um, No. uh, And they're the best. Yeah, they're – their best win is at Michigan. And I mean, Michigan wasn't super great this year. Howard got fired. Um, but, you know, they played College of Biblical Studies. They played Champion Christian. Uh, and I'm not going to, I'm going to butcher the hell out of this La Tournee. And then, yeah, they had, a, they had some really weird ones on there. Yeah. Mississippi University for Women. Like, I thought that was an odd one. <laughs> I mean, you know, I if if McNeese State was playing, let's say, um, not not St. Mary's, but if McNeese State was playing Wisconsin or even San Diego State, mm-hmm. I'd probably feel a little more comfortable with that. But I think mm-hmm. even after losing, you know, to St. Mary's, I think Gonzaga is still kind of gelling together. They had a little bit of a rough start to the year, um, so I feel pretty good about that. I mean, it's it's the same thing. As, um, you know, not to go dive into the women's tournament, but like the women's tournament, I was super high on Fairfield. I mean, you know, they have some decent wins. 
but then they stuck them with IU and that's just, it. Sucks you know, to suck. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, make any other team in the, in the five seeds and actually, it, you know, BYU probably could have been a five seed, but the whole not playing on Sundays kind of played into yeah. that. Messing um, up there. Yeah. So any other five seed aside from St. Mary's, that's what I would have done. Uh, Trev, we appreciate you hopping in. Obviously, you're supposed to be here so we can make fun of Duke, but family stuff comes first. It's all good. Is is anybody in this group going to take Kansas? Because I'm not. Does anybody believe Kansas is going to be healthy enough to win this game? Nate is. I have them yeah. in. I have them in one bracket. All right, but you got to pick. You got to which bracket matters the most. I, I am in my two most important brackets. I'm or no. One I have my two most important <laughs> my two most important brackets. One I have Kansas and one I have Samford. But the one I made first is Samford, so I'm locking that in. Go I'm Samford. going with Kansas, the most unlucky team in the past about five years or so when it comes to March. I guess they do have that one. Uh, but the team or the, one of the best teams, maybe the best team in the nation in 2020, is the team that feels like it's cursed, it's haunted. Uh, they get two of their better players hurt right now. I still think they're going to have enough for Samford. I have Gonzaga taking McNeese State down. I Maybe this was me booking with my heart a little bit, picking with my heart, but I think a Gonzaga-Kansas matchup is something that I look forward to watching. So I, ha I don't have either of those two teams getting much further than the second round, to be honest with you, but I've, I think Kansas still will have enough to beat Samford, but – it's going to be a close one. Both these games, I think, mm -hmm. are going to be tight, James. Yeah, I think I think that's might be my favorite pot of the whole tournament is those four right there. I think they could go either way. Jump into the next one. We get South Carolina, Lamont, Lamont Paris, and his new mega contract versus the Pac-12 champions, Oregon Ducks. Oregon was not going to make the tournament without winning the Pac-12. They stole a bid that may have helped cost ISU the tourney. Is anybody going to take Ooh. the Ducks? Because I'm not. I think I think South Carolina's really good. Oh, uh, right? okay. yeah, I, I, I kind of agree here. I still think South Carolina is a bunch of frauds personally. Oh, okay. Um, and that there's you. nothing, there's nothing I've seen from any of their games that I feel confident they're going to do anything worth it. This isn't 2017 Frank Martin leading the Gamecocks here. I, I just, I, I don't think the SEC was a super, it was kind of a top heavy conference and then I think it dropped off a ton after. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, you know, I feel like Oregon's playing with again, I hate to use this term again, but house money, you know, they're on fire here. Um I feel pretty confident in that pick. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we gotta say, split there. Go keeps, go ahead, buddy. I'm along the same thinking. I think South Carolina's a good team, but they have been pretty fraudulent in some games this year. Okay. Uh, and like Nate said, Oregon's just catching fire at the right time. So I think that's an easy 11-6 upset. I don't think it's necessarily that close either. Cool. Uh, Kev, any comments? That stream deck, you got to find that mute button, dog. Yeah, I'm pressing X to doubt on that Ooh, one. I'm boys. getting overridden. Give me Carolina, South Carolina. Oh, no, 2-2 two, two tie again. Yeah. See, this, is why, this is why Trev getting – getting not being able to make it screwing us up because we're all even here so we're gonna have we're gonna have a 64 team finals what's gonna happen on, not the on next this one. next one there's no way we're split no. on this one no. right no, no way Creighton, my hometown nebraska team one of two nebraska is the center of the basketball world right now in nebraska and creighton and akron who gets in on one of the wildest endings you'll ever see in a conference tournament game where a player fouled because they thought they were down one in reality they were up one and they lost. Uh, There's a lot of Creighton in this tournament. Yes, Creighton by 100. Anybody going to disagree with me? If if this were Toledo, I'd consider Toledo. Didn't but make it. Toledo did Respect. what Toledo likes to do and yeah. completely shoot themselves in the foot. So um, I I don't. I don't really think Akron's that. I mean, you know, they've had some good teams in the past, and they've mm -hmm. made some good games. I just, I just don't think that's the team this year. Keeps no argument here, James. Kev, I got Creighton going deep. 
Akron and four <laughs> by size bike says Keebs, are you on the Creighton bandwagon with me? Yeah, I think I have them in one of my brackets in like the final four. So I do too. I love that Creighton. I love them. Um, next one, Texas with Rodney Terry and the slow place of Virginia and their 40 points a game with oh. Colorado State, who I think is massively underseated in this tournament. I cannot believe they were a first four in team. You guys got Kev. We're going to start with you down in the bottom corner. Uh, I've got Colorado State beating the lowly, boring Virginia team that has no point being in this tournament right now. It should be the Indiana State Sycamores playing potentially, maybe mm -hmm. not in that spot. But Virginia, who wants to see a Virginia team? As James liked to say, a 40-point Virginia team in March. We team. know what we're getting here. If Virginia does manage to beat Colorado State, this will change my pick, and I will go back to Texas. But give me Colorado State here, James. As you said, um, uh, underseeded team, losing some respect here, um, and give me them over the Longhorns. Nate? Um, first of all, uh, you know, I think Indiana State should be in. Um, but I don't think this should have been Virginia. This should have been Pitt playing in this game instead of Virginia. Also, can also hear that argument. Um, I've got ISU over another team later in the bracket, but um, I think Colorado State, you know, can can do some damage there. But personally, I'm, I'm taking Texas. I mean, yeah. they've been they've been pretty shaky, but I think that the strength of Big Twelve. You know, and having some good wins, you know, they'll get move on to the second round, but I don't have them going any further. Mm -hmm. Keebler? I'm just going to keep it short. I'm going Texas. So we got to split again. See, this uh, we had, we needed to find a fifth somewhere. We, we got too many people in, bite, in the bite size network that have kids and have real life obligations. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, next one, I was real disappointed we didn't get a rematch produced uh, in St. Peter's, but are we all on board the Dalton Connect Mose down St. Peter's train? Yes. All right. So now we have to decide. We have to have a battle here. Who is our final four pick from this region? And we all have to come to somewhat of an agreement on this because we're going to pick a title winner together. So my – my Elite Eight matchup is Gonzaga versus Tennessee, and I got Tennessee moving on to the Final Four. Let's go. I'm behind Keebler, that. I'm with him Keebler, on the Tennessee. Do you, what do you think? My Elite Eight matchup. Um, hold on. Let me make sure I'm reading this right really quickly. <laughs> um, did not. Okay, let me go to my other bracket. Uh, Kev, you got any thoughts on it while he's getting pulled up? Yeah, I'm going to stick with my home team. little fun fact about me, boys. I was actually born at the University of Tennessee, so I'm a homer here. Ooh. I'm going with the Volunteers, baby. Okay. I've got them. I don't remember if I had Gonzaga in this spot. I do have at least one bracket where Purdue goes out in the second round. I I still I stand by what I said before that I think Purdue will at least get out of the first two rounds. I, I think they're going to do better than a lot of people think. But mm -hmm. give me Tennessee. That's where most of my brackets have me have been landing. Tennessee, give me in the final four. Okay, I got it. Keith, I got what'd it. you come up with there? I'm just going to go with this one. Uh, the original bracket I had pulled up. Um, my elite eight. I had Utah State versus Tennessee, um, and then I had Tennessee winning that. So. Okay. So, out of the Midwest region, we've all come to an easy conclusion. We are taking Tennessee to the Final Four, which also a team coached by Rick Barnes that has failed a lot in March, and the jokes have already started last week when they lost in the SEC tournament. So, we're going against the trend here. Um, next region, we're going East region. The number one overall uh, UConn Huskies, the number one seed overall versus the Stetson – Hatters and Donnie Jones in his first his first um, Stetson's first tournament appearance ever. Uh, this is a wild region. It's got three of last year's Final Four teams in it. Uh, it was always the Owls as the eight. Uh, Justin Herbert, San Diego State, Aztecs as five. Um, there's a lot going on. We've got our resident, our Valley team is in here. The Drake Bulldogs in the ten. Duquesne's first tournament uh, 
Yeah, Glid's Glid's an Iowa State and a Drake fan. That's or, uh, Iowa State and South Dakota State fan. Her brother's on staff at South Dakota State. That's a brutal draw. Um, you also get Duquesne's first trip to the tournament in 47 years. Shout out Trey Williams, one of my former players on that team, making the tournament before his career ended. And Keith Dambrot announcing he was retiring today, that this is going to be his last run. Um, Keebler, a uh, fun quiz question for you. Keith Dambrot, the head coach of Duquesne, also coached at Akron. What is he most famous for? That's a really good question. I'll pass that on to uh, Kev. He is most famous for being LeBron James's ninth grade coach. James, is that right? I think it was as high school. He was, was high school. school? He was, well, he that, was the, where I come from, ninth grade is part of high school. Yeah. But. yeah, he is the he was the head coach at St. Vincent St. Mary's, if I am correct. Oh, he was he was the head coach. Okay, yeah, I was, he I was, was like, I was, don't uh, know. I don't imagine LeBron was on the freshman team, but uh, no, yeah. yeah, yeah, he was uh, LeBron's <laughs> high school coach. Um, which we, when we I played him in Akron. We played up there, and they had all LeBron stuff. And I was in in Akron's arena is really dumpy, so it was kind of one of those weird deals. Uh, that's right. Shout out everybody in the chat. I see you all there. I see all our viewers. We are closing in on 100 live viewers right now. So we appreciate all of you here. Um, uh, we'll start at the top. Is anybody going to get real ballsy and take the Stetson Hatters to pull off the upset over the number one overall seat in this brat in this whole tournament? UConn by like 80. Yeah, I, yeah, I will spoil my next two 1v16s as well, James. I don't think we're getting any of those this year. This and year. For, for our sake, I really hope it's several years before that happens again. It's kind of one of those things, the more it happens, the less special it is. And it also would mean we're doing a real shit job of picking these one seeds if they're getting beat by 16s. Uh, I love some parody, but no, I think I think these need to be away for a couple of years. So that's how I'm going to be picking them. But not Just this team. Jeff's calling us out for a March Madness special without any warning. Jeff, we already <laughs> talked about the Southland. We talked about McNeese already. You missed it. Um, posted oh, yesterday. Great. It's going it's to be even happier now. So, <laughs> Jeff, closing I, up just a little bit closer to the, the 100 viewers. What's that, Nate? I, uh, you know, Stetson Scott, uh, you know, Indiana guy, and Jalen Blackman, and I would mm -hmm. love to see him go off, but – um, unfortunately, I think Stetson's probably losing by like 22, give mm -hmm. or take. Yeah, I think they're going to get uh, mowed down. I think the line is 22 and a half, 26 and a half. It's a mega line. Um, oh, so commenting on our first on the Midwest, we already went through Creighton beats Purdue in the Elite Eight. I can, I mean, I can get behind it. Um, next Love one's a that. big one. Um, a lot of people think Florida Atlantic is overseeded Northwestern, a mid big 10 team. We got the eight, nine. It was always the owls. You guys already know where I was, where I'm going with this. Uh, yes, Donnie, Jeff worked with Donnie. Great dude. First time taking them to the tournament. Stetson, uh, I'm going owls. I refuse to quit them. Anybody else? What do you guys think? Uh, let's go, Nate, as the resident Big Ten expert outside of how to guard Casey Tomonaga. How do you feel? <laughs> uh, I feel I feel pretty comfortable taking FAU. Um, you know, Big Ten kind of of late has been pretty mediocre in the tournament. Um, you know, FAU does have some really bad losses, and I mean like really bad losses. Weird ones, yeah. Um, the, the Temple one is a head scratcher, which is funny in itself, you know, with with the okay, whole baby. point. Yeah, the whole point <laughs> shading thing. And it, as soon as that came out, Temple just started playing. They I don't practice. think they've lost. They, they didn't lose until the title game, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> wow, um, <laughs> so comfortable. And, you know, I, it would have been real interesting to see, you know, just for gambling sake, if they had made the tournament, what – you know, the sports books and stuff we're going to do with them. But, um, yeah, I think FAU takes care of business. Kev Keebler, what do you think? I've got a bit of nerves here. You guys can see I uh, said it was never oh. the Owls this time oh. around this year. However, oh. uh, I do like them to go ahead and win this game against Northwestern. I think the knock against FAU is that – they're only ranked this high because they had a, a high ranking at the beginning of the season. They're kind of living off of last year's reputation. But I, I think 
It's the same they're, guys, though. Now. Exactly. And that's exactly what I was getting. They're the same guys. They know what it takes to get mm-hmm. things done this time of year. I do like them over Northwestern. And, uh, you know, I just uh, – they're, they're going to run into a buzzsaw that is UConn. So, good luck yep. to you there. Keeps, but are I, you going to join us on the Owls beat Northwestern train and then get mowed down by the best team in the, t- in the tournament? I have a gut feeling that Northwestern's going to win this game. So, Ooh, okay, so going a little bit against the grain. I'm going to be different and go with Northwestern. I mean, it is the same Florida Atlantic team, but they have not played as well this year. Nate brought up they've got some really goofy losses, and a lot of people would say the eight's a little high, but we shall see. Yeah, see, see, this is where we need. I know he's busy with his kid, but we need Justin Herbert popping in. He needed to be in this one talking about the Owls and the San Diego State Aztecs. Next up, the Aztecs versus UAB. UAB winning the conference tournament over Temple, who um, just decided to go get real good after the point shavings allegations. But overall, terrible season. Uh, is anybody going to take the UAB? I don't what Their mascot's a dragon. Blazers, right? right? Blazers, right? Blazers, right? I drew a complete blank there. Um, is anybody going to piss Justin Herbert off and cheer against his team? I don't. I think San Diego State's a fraud, but I also don't think UAB is going to be um, super successful in this tournament. Um, mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll take the Aztecs in this matchup. Yep. Yeah, in a world where everybody's looking for a five twelve to pick, uh, this is where I'm sticking with the five. Mm-hmm. You know, Keebler, like, any oh, arguments there? No. I'm the same. I, I we don't need to talk too much about that one. I think San Diego State wins that one crazy. Jeff brings up a good point. Only UF has been to the Sweet 16 after winning the Natty the previous year. That's why my belief that UConn wins the whole thing is actually stupid, and it makes me very dumb because somebody's got to do it. Yet. You know, can't we can't let Joachim Noah be the last guy to celebrate? He was Joachim Noah and Lee Humphrey. Uh, Auburn Yale <laughs> Yale wins the Ivy League. Auburn coming out of the SEC. Let's see. What's Jeff got? 11 is the one to take. 12s don't win the second games. Fair enough. Um, is anybody going to take this the uh, bookworms of Yale over the super athletic Auburn Tigers? It, if it was Princeton, I'd consider it. I was so bummed yep. that Brown basically choked yep, away the, mm-hmm. the tournament bid. Um, I just – Ivy tends to be a pretty good conference, in my opinion. And, you know, there are times where you could probably make a case for a second bid, but uh, I think Auburn's going to run them out of the gym, uh, personally. And so, yeah. And I think we're going to have a, you know, just to spoil it a little, I think we're going to have an, a pretty hyped up UConn Auburn matchup in the Sweet 16. Ooh. Kev, Keebler, any arguments on the Yale, on Yale pulling this one off? No arguments from me. I do think it'll be a little closer than maybe Nate thinks. Uh, I I think Yale's going to make Auburn sweat a little bit, but I think ultimately Auburn's too good. Jeff is correct. Typically an 11 that wins the first four makes the second weekend. That's VCU made the final four doing it. It is absolutely typically happens. Mine is Colorado. Or no, I can't be Colorado State because I'm going to lose to Tennessee. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's no there's no first four 11 seed this year. Um, mega athletic matchup in San Diego State and Auburn in the second round there. Coming down to the bottom side, we got BYU out of the Big 12, which is fucking weird to say. F-bomb, 34 minutes in, boys. We made it. Ooh, we did it. The Duquesne Dukes and my boy Trey Williams, Keith Dambrot. Anybody going to take the Dukes over BYU? They've won eight in a row. I think it'll be close, but I, mm-hmm. I think, you know, I think – the Dukes of Duquesne run out of gas there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, with you having the connection there, I, I definitely root for him. Yeah. I don't think Trey's going to play this week. He got hurt in one of the conference tournament games in a tied up ball. And I think he popped something in his, his elbow. He was in a sling, elbow or shoulder. He was in a sling uh, in the last two games last weekend. So I don't actually know what happened. I know he got hurt pretty bad. So I kind of feel this. I will be cheering for Duquesne. I believe BYU wins that one. Uh, going to the next one, 314, Illinois, who looked like they were going to get mowed down by Nebraska and then did the mowing down of Nebraska because Nebraska forgot how to play basketball for 15 minutes. Versus Moorhead State, a really good Moorhead State team, a 
they're like 28 and four or something wild like that. Keebler, are you, uh, you rocking with the three seed Illinois? Or are we getting a big time upset here? Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm just going to rock with Illinois, play it safe. I think that's the smarter pick. Terrence Shannon was fantastic in every game last week and them winning the Big Ten tournament. Uh, Nate, Kev, are you guys going against that at all? Kev, you go first. No, I'm not. The uh, I, I think there is – I don't know if I've got any 14s over threes this year, to be mm -hmm. honest. I think I've got a 13 over a four coming up here soon, but – uh, three fourteen. I think uh, I like Illinois in this one. Yep, I think we're all Nate. You feel the same way? Yeah. So in terms of conference strength, it, it just you know, in my uneducated opinion, you've got like the, the SWAC in the MIAC the in the basement. You got the Northeast Conference. Mm -hmm. You got um, shoot, what was the other one? I I, I said SWAC and MIAC and the Northeast Conference, and then you got the remnants of the Ohio Valley um, mm -hmm. there. I think Moorhead State's 26 and eight, um, but they were not even the first seed, which doesn't necessarily matter, but they weren't even the first seed in the conference tournament. Mm -hmm. um, surprisingly, um, I, I just. You are our resident low major expert. You did go to the Horizon Conference Championship. I, I just, you know, I'd have to, I had to have to look it up here, but. You know, they played IU close, but that's not really saying much. Mm -mm, um, yeah. Nowadays. But I, I just don't know that they had any really good um, good games or, like, good wins. I mean, they got blown the fuck out by Alabama. They got blown out by Purdue. Um, mm -hmm. Got blown out by Penn State. Um, you know, they played your, your team in your neck of the woods, St. Mary's of the woods, and blew them out. But, um, you know. I just, yeah, just looking through here, they don't really have um, any quality wins whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I just don't think they're as good as what their record is. Yep. So we're all <coughs> on Illinois. Next one is one of my favorite ones. I am gonna, I'll go first. I think Drake wins this game over Washington State. Obviously, Washington State way out west, where nobody ever gets to see him. We've seen Drake live multiple times. Tucker DeVries will find a roster spot in the NBA. They've got shooters all around them. Is anybody else going to argue with me that Washington State is going to take down my Bulldogs? No. I got Drake, too. Same. I got Drake, but I, I think Washington State's got a good program. I just I think Drake is probably the better yeah. team. Trev points out a very good thing here. Des Moines is less than two hours from Omaha. A straight shot. It is going to be packed with Bulldogs fans. They are going to be there. That's going to be a home game. Drake easily in that one. Um, and then the bottom of the bracket, the Iowa State cycle well, is coming off. The, what's up? Isn't that – you said two hours? Two it, hours. Isn't Drake in Des Moines? Yeah, Drake's in Des Moines. That game is in Omaha. I thought that game was in Des Moines. No, it's in Omaha, I believe, isn't it? Why did I think it was in Des Moines? I, either way, it's still a close match. Either way, it's within so. two hours. It's either zero yeah. minutes or two <laughs> hours. Um, <laughs> you know, I might get to see my first Duke game this Friday against Vermont in Brooklyn. Oh, there you go. Yeah, they're playing up in the Barclays. That'd be fun. Uh, it is in Omaha. Glenn's going to be there because that's where uh, the Jackrabbits and Iowa State play in the bottom. Uh, Iowa State – against Jackrabbits. This is not the San South Dakota State team from a few years ago. Anybody taking the upset after the Cyclones just rolled through the Big Ten or Big 12 and put a hurting on Houston? No, I, I really like Iowa State right now. So, no, not me. This is a this is a down South Dakota State team. Yep. Um, so, no. Yeah, it's, I think that's an easy one. Uh, Jeff brings up a good point, a comment we didn't go back to. I want to pull back up. Uh, the, Ken, the cumulative Kim Palm of this region is asinine. What's the purpose of being the number one overall? You're absolutely correct. This would be the region of death, as they would call it. Um, good thing is, Jeff, that nobody in the selection committee uses Ken Palm. A universally accepted stat that every coaching staff uses has no need to be in the selection committee room. Don't need it. 
So it doesn't matter. That's why. It doesn't matter. Um, Trev is super jealous of Keebler right now because he's also a fellow dookie. I'm trying to convince Nick to go, but he says he has plans Friday. I'm going to try to drag him. I'm going to well, – He's going to find – he's going to get out of those plans. I'm going to throw him in a body bag because the uh, the uh, tickets are only 150 Like, See so your team, man. You got like you don't know when the next time they'll be in your back door. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Phrasing. That's I thought that's the same. crazy. <laughs> that, that's so, I mean, one fifty isn't too bad, but like I paid one ten in twenty twelve to go see IU in Kentucky and Atlanta in the Sweet Sixteen, and then of course you know uh, Xavier and Baylor. But uh, that's crazy though. I, I also got the New York tax against me, so that has something to do with it. That is true. So, okay, now we have to argue on this one. Okay, yes, Jeff, I'm going to bring this up. The net is completely irrelevant in anybody's minds. If you saw Kim English, the head coach of Providence, comment, he it said uh, advanced ad- analytics are bullshit. <laughs> it's just first <laughs> words out of his mouth. It's the, the net's a joke. Don't use it for anything because ISU was 29th in the net and they're the highest ever and they got left out. So they just just right beat the shit out of bums by 40 points on your home court on your home turf and you become the big 12 and you get every team you want in the league in um and then every other team in the mountain west big east just gets screwed so we got to pick a winner here and i think we're going to be arguing a lot because i think it's yukon um i i'm i'm sticking with it i think yukon's toughest matchup is going to be that alber game and i went back and forth thinking about mm-hmm that one but i think yukon takes care of business doesn't really have a hangover from last year um so i'm in agreement cool keebler yeah i think south dakota state just runs right through that uh region no um definitely yukon trev trev says iowa state's too bad he's not on here because he gets no vote matter he's overruled four to one UConn, we've got two of our final four teams. We've got UConn and Tennessee in the final four right now. That's right. Heading over to the West. And this was when I made the thumb. I gave Kev the pictures for the thumbnail. I shot in the dark. Not really in the dark, but I thought North Carolina would get the fourth one seed, and I was correct. Nate, I'm going to let you pick. Will they be upset? Will Howard or Wagner (laughs) playing on Tuesday or Wednesday? I don't know. I don't have the schedule up in front of me. Will they pull off the 16-1, to the third one ever? Well, considering the fact that I said the MEAC and the Northeast Conference were two of the worst conferences in America, uh, you know, I get, um, you know, I get that Farley Dickinson is was in the Northeast Conference, and you never know, but you've got a team with an almost losing record and. Um, I'm not even sure what Howard's Ken Palm is, but I don't think it's very high. Bad, um, I yeah, um, I, I'm confidently taking North Carolina moving forward. Anybody else, Keebs? You got a little look in your eye. You, you going to pick the upset? As a Duke fan, I fucking wish, but I got to go with UNC. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll give UNC the pass on the way through. Next one, uh, Mississippi State and the Fighting Chris Jans is my former boss. Versus Tom is on Michigan State in what I think is one of the most overseeded teams in the bracket. I will pass this straight to Nate, resident Big Ten expert and low major expert. Nate, who's winning this game? Does Michigan State have a prayer? Howard is 276, by the way. I see it in the chat. Um, I, oh, well, yeah. So they're um, kind of ass. Um, kind of ass. I actually. <laughs> I, I actually – Mississippi State, to me, is, you know, just uh, based on mostly on feeling. Mississippi State is not a team, I think, that should have been in the tournament to mm-hmm. begin with. Um, you know, Michigan State is overseeded, but I think, you know, based on their record and then the fact that they beat ISU, I think if you had ISU in the tournament, Michigan State would have to be in the tournament because they have some good wins. And I don't know that they really have any terrible losses. Um, I mean, obviously at the I beginning, of the, so. yeah, obviously at the beginning of the year, you know, we people probably thought, oh, the, you know, James Madison loss was going to be bad, but 
Um, no, I Turned mean, you know, right. they, they played a bunch of teams like close. I mean, you know, they just could not consistently um, figure it out. But yeah, I mean, I, you know, I feel, feel pretty confident in the uh, uh, Spartans there to slaughter some Bulldogs. Anybody else? Is anybody going to pick against the Spartans? Because I will. I am right there with you, James. I can hardly believe that I'm going to say it because almost uh, every year this time of year, I'm one of the guys saying, you don't bet against Tom Izzo Mm -hmm. in March, you know, at least not very confidently. But um, this is one of those years that I do think that they're going to get beat in the first round. So. They match as well against well, <laughs> Christian Blatter, unfortunately. Uh, Keebler, who do you got? You're the final final vote here. Tom if you put MSU, March. you're through. Tom is Owen March, baby. Let's get it. All right. We got split up again. So Mississippi State's best player was out for two months. That's why I lean towards them. Uh, but it is it is uh, Tom is Owen March. So we'll stick. Going to the next pod, one of my favorite – matchups of the tournament i hate that they're both playing each other two west coast teams saint mary's versus grand canyon keebler i see underneath your name there that it says something about a grand canyon cinderella run in in, in full cap so the floor is yours absolutely um i don't really have much to say on it I just picked a Cinderella team, and that's going to be Grand Canyon. Um, I know one of their guys is destined to be a solid NBA pick. Um, So with that being said, I'm just going to go Grand Canyon. St. Mary's I have not trusted during the regular season at all, Um, and I'm not going to trust them in March if I haven't trusted them in the regular season. So give me Grand Canyon. Keeb's going with the Grand Canyon spot. I'm going to flip it over to you, Nate. How do you feel about St. Mary's versus Grand Canyon? Are you with Keeb's on this one? Um, so, you know, taking it kind of like here at some uh, face value, I, you know, they have, you know, Indiana negative Bryce Drew as, as a coach there, you know, obviously formerly of um, – Formerly of uh, Vanderbilt, as well as uh, 1998 uh, NCAA tournament fame with hitting the shot against Old Miss. Uh, but just for, you know, I, I think St. Mary's is getting hot at the right time, and they have looked very impressive in the past couple months. Um, and just, you know, other reasons, too. Uh, I can't bring myself to root for Grand Canyon. Uh, I think St. Mary's takes this comfortably. Yeah, I'm actually with you. I don't know necessarily about how comfortably I do like St. Mary's here. And in my brackets, I've had a hard time sort of deciding when I think St. Mary's will lose. Um, So I think they're going to pull this one out against Grand Canyon. For me this year, guys, it just wasn't a great 5-12 year, if I'm being honest. I know we talked about that before. Jeff mentioned that, you know, 11s are a better route to go than 6s. We might have one here coming up that maybe we'll be picking the 11 in but yeah this year I don't they're not there aren't too many 12s that I'm super high on I'm not high on Grand Canyon beating St. Mary's and in fact I think St. Mary's uh, may have a run in them but we'll talk about that a little later James I will hand it back to you sir it uh, looks like right now Keebler is alone on Grand Canyon Island are you going to stick with the Gales or are you going to ride it out with Keebs I am going to stick with the Gales, Keeves. We're going to let you be on 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 the the Cinderella bandwagon, and when it takes off, you can just wave at us as it's going bye bye. I have I have Keeves them. I there. Think they're losing in the Sweet Sixteen or the Elite Eight. Ooh, I can tell. I kind of like it. I, St. Mary's came out of the West Coast Conference, beat Gonzaga, won the tournament for the first time in a long time. I'm going to stick with them there, but I would love to see the twelve go through. Next one, we've got Bama, Charleston, super athletic Bama team. Uh, anybody taking Charleston? Is anybody going with the Southeast team? I guess they're both Southeast. Um, saying there. They're both Southeast teams. Yeah, the, the the Southeastern Ocean team. I know I have it in at least one bracket. I've got it in uh, in what I, what is admittedly my upset heavy bracket, having Charleston take mm-hmm. over, take Bama down. But honestly, this 
As far as uh, maybe not, I don't know if it'll be the most exciting pod when it comes time to watching the games, but this one has been mm-hmm. the most fun for me to try to pick, if I'm being honest, because I could go, you know, you could convince me into Grand Canyon, at, although I'm sticking with St. Mary's, but I also have been convinced to pick Charleston over Bama, although I do think, generally speaking, I think the smart money's on Bama, but uh, I have I have taken a flyer on Charleston on at least one bracket. Jeff is correct. Defense will not exist in this game. There is Alabama's, I think, the highest scoring offense in the land, and Charleston scores bunches too. There is, yep. It'll be easier to hit the over, and Bam will lose on a buzzer beater. I, I mean, I can get behind that. I can, I can get behind that. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else got a hot take here? Like, I'll, I'll go with Charleston just for the fun of, for the show. Like, give me the thirteen oh, yeah. over four. This is to me the most likely four thirteen upset, but um, you know, just because. Alabama seems to be the most hot, cold team, super inconsistent, um, you know, but I, I think NATO, it's will, you know, get them on track for at least one game here. Um, I, you know, if, if Charleston was playing any of the other ones, I'd consider it. Um, but I, I feel pretty comfortable with Alabama. Keebler, any, any thoughts, causes, concerns? I think Bama's just going to run them out the gym. All right, we'll go Bama. Bama it is. Next one, you've got Clemson out of the ACC and the Mountain West winners, New Mexico. Some thought they might not get in without that run. Um, is I'm just going to straight up and say I think New Mexico is going to bully them in this game. So I'm, I'm going to put that one out there. Does anybody else want to contradict me here? 11-6. This is the easiest 11-6 upset in my opinion. Nate, are you going to take one for our boy David Westergreen and pick Clemson? Because unfortunately, I also have New Mexico in this one. Well, for, for David's sake, I hope that Clemson gets run the fuck out of the gym. Uh, <laughs> they're, um, no, so their their coach is, in my opinion, is pretty terrible, and I always see David complaining about him. Um, so for his sake, let's get rid of, you know, Coach Bromwell. Yeah, Brad Bronwell. Right there. Uh, yeah, there it is. Um, and <laughs> I'm not taking it. I'm not doing it. Yeah. Not going to do it. <laughs> For David's sake, I'm taking New Mexico, although I think they're the better team regardless. I agree. Uh, trivia time. I like to offer – Keebler trivia questions because I, I I like to get these weird ones for him because I, I know he pays more attention to the NBA. Keebler, there are two former NBA players team or kids on New Mexico squad. Can you name them? They're my era, so they're old. What do you consider your era? Um, God, that'd been nineties, late nineties, early two thousands. I believe would have been the era. Okay, so the ooh, right, Jeff got, got it. it. Yeah, I don't got it, but I'm just gonna fire away a guess. Um, not like super studs, like they were good NBA players, but not Hall of Fame level, anything like that. I'm gonna go Rex Chapman. Ooh, that's a good guess. Not it though, but good guess. Has anybody has anybody else seen him play? Nate, did you watch him play it all this weekend? I did, but for the life of me, I frankly they both played remember. really good. Um, I don't remember, so I'm cheating and looking yeah. it up right now. It is Eddie House Jr. Oh and my Jamal god, Jamal Mashburn Jr. Oh, let's go! All yeah. right, now, that's Jamal my Mashburn Jr. Spot. started off on fire in one of those Jamal games. Jamal Mashburn, one of my favorite yep. players. Jeff's back got it. Mar- Mashburn and mm. House. Yep, Eddie House. Oh man, just one of those. Uh, uh, well, he's what just more of a, a shooting backup point guard, right? I feel like Eddie House, he, mm-hmm. he could hit some hit some threes. What yep. did he play for Boston? Oh, uh, that's that's legit. I, oh man, dude, Jamal. So Mashburn, that's that it. Yeah, you got when you guys watch that game, you'll see those names and you'll just be like, damn, guys, we really are fucking old. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the mate, no, MLB does that to me constantly. Like, I just watch one Toronto Blue Jays game and I'm just weeping, you know. It's oh, like, yeah, I, I agree that with team that had dads that I grew up watching. I'm like, oh my god, this sucks. Mm-hmm. Before you watch like the Acunas just pump out like four MLB studs, Eddie <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> House is a champion, champion, Jeff says. That's right, he is with the 08 Celtics. 
Boom. Correct. Look at that. This is a trivia segment. Where's Where's old Johnny when we need him? Uh, moving to the three fourteen matchup, Baylor Colgate. Uh, does Colgate have a prayer in anyone, or is Baylor just gonna just athletically just bully him? Bully him? Why did I I, I will give you my answer by telling you I use Crest toothpaste. <laughs> There's my answer. <laughs> I'm a Crest guy too, so I'm in. Um, shout out Boomer Jenkins, who is a PhD from Colgate University. Keeler, are you taking Colgate? You going to do it? No, I got to go Baylor. I have him making a nice little run in the tourney. So, yep. One Kate of our Keith. rare sweeps here, boys, because uh, yep. I am also more of a Crest man myself. <laughs> Baylor's going to leave Colgate. With a bunch of cavities. I don't know. I didn't have a good pun lined up for that. <laughs> yeah, you didn't. This is Jeff is correct. B <laughs> Boomer does have a PhD in vibe curation from Colgate University. Uh 710 matchup. Dayton out of the A10. They get the they get a I was gonna say wild card, but they did not win the league. Uh versus Nevada out of the Mountain West at large bids for both of them. Anybody leaning either way in this one specifically? I'm a super homer, but there's no way I'm going against Dayton on this one, boys. It's the biggest I shame. Know. I talked about Kansas in 2020. They you know, the, are the biggest the shame. Biggest shame of 2020 was the Dayton Flyers, man. What might have been. I think they would have won it that been. year. And uh, I hope for their sake they get at least one win out of this tournament to make up for what might have been. So uh, give me the Flyers, baby. Mm -hmm. As much as I hate Steve Alford, for a variety of reasons. <laughs> I think Nevada takes this uh, matchup. I think they're playing better as of late. Um, you know, Dayton kind of looks shaky in A-10 play, so I'm taking Nevada and, you know, taking a couple shots from the Lord to forget that. <laughs> Have a shoe. Don't so we got one-to-one, -one. Keebler. I'm going Nevada on this one. Uh, just a gut feeling. Just a gut feeling. Kev, we're going to leave you out on an island, buddy. Nevada, Good. the Wolf Pack, we're taking them. So bye bye, fly, Dayton baby. Flyers. Fly, you're flying solo Ooh, tonight. That's right. Um, final matchup in the West is Zona Long Beach State, Long Beach State, with one of the crazier stories of the tournament. Last Monday, their head coach and the administration decided to part ways. But they let him coach through the tournament. And as you can see, they are in the tournament. They won their conference tournament. He made the tournament. He will, uh, he is leaving. They have parted ways, but uh, he is going to the tournament. Is anybody going to get real wild here and take the beach over Arizona and, and Caleb Love out there? I really contemplated it. I really did. But I got to go zone on this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mission has been accomplished. Now, coach should get. Uh... A nice landing spot, I imagine, right? He'll find another job here, but no, so. Arizona is going to win this one for sure. Nate? Well, you know, it'd be pretty funny. I mean, it's not realistic, but it would have been pretty funny for Long Beach State to make it to, like, the Final Four or something like Just that. Just go on a tear. A, yeah, with a lame deck coach. Um but, you know, Arizona, as deserty as they are, it's going to suck up all all the sand in Long Beach mm -hmm. and leave the dirt bags, as their baseball team is known, uh, with without uh, without a place to beach. So Wait, he coaches uh, the Houston Astros. <laughs> uh, oh, we get sorry. all sports on here, folks. You need baseball references. We got them. OK, the so only baseball winning. team I've ever heard referred to as dirt bags. But sorry, Nate, go ahead. So, yeah, I, you know, Arizona takes takes all the sand from Long Beach and takes it back to Tucson. There you have it, folks. Zona taking the sand from the beach. All right, boys, <laughs> we now have to decide who is winning the West. Has anybody got any hot takes? Is it going to be R.J. Davis, the Tar Heels? Will it be their former teammate, Caleb Love, in Arizona? Do we like somebody else out of here? I really want that matchup, don't you? Like, uh, I think we I hate to root it. for chalk, but that's a pretty cool one-two storyline. Mm -hmm. If we Keeps, get it, you got any thoughts? 
So I, I just made a bracket while we've been on here. So I'm just going to go with that pick. <laughs> Let's um, go. <laughs> I'm gonna give us that guy that puts in 200 brackets and gets every game right, but it's spread across all of them. I'm gonna go with Baylor. Baylor. Ooh. Okay. What? Hot take. What? I do look. I'm going chalk on this one, guys. I think North Carolina. This is uh, a team. I think this is this is perfect. It's it writes itself. Right. Not mm-hmm. even in the tournament last year. These guys came back. They got something to prove. They're a one seed now. I'm I, give me Carolina, Arizona. So we got uh, you can Baylor and Carolina right now. Carolina. I am going to say it's kind of going to be chalky. Um, I think we're going to have a revenge match between Caleb Love and the the Tar Heels uh, for birth to the Final Four. Um, I will say though that the um, since this is out west, um, I think the Tar Heels are going to start walking in some desert sand and get stuck and not make it out of there alive. He's got a lot of sand puns. He loves that sand reference. I love that, dude. The sand love similes sand. are very good. I love the Carolina Zona matchup. I would agree. I think this is the worst region. Give me Zona. Give me the Caleb Love revenge game. So we're putting Zona in. So now we've got our first Final Four matchup, which is – I'm pulling up the bracket because I don't see it there. We've got Arizona versus UConn on one side here with Tennessee on the other side awaiting our final region. Dude, Ooh. yeah. No team that has missed making it to their conference semis has made the Final Four. I, that is Ooh. a thing. I, I did see that the other day. Well, so, then – Final region is the South, uh, led now, by we Houston. Could just, we could just skip this one. You know, Duke's just going to make it right on through. <laughs> if you would have asked me last week, a week ago today, I would have picked Houston to win the whole thing, and then they casually got annihilated in their conference championship game. Oh, they got beat yeah. by four touchdowns, James. Yeah, just a few touchdowns. Yeah, it's it's like a, a big deal. Is anybody going to take the Longwood Lancers? In the upset in the 16 one. We're we're out. We're done with 16s, right? We've agreed. I mean, shouts out to whoever named that school, the <laughs> Longwood Lancers, but no. Sorry, not today. All right, poor fellas. Um, moving on to the eight nine game. My hometown Nebraska Cornhuskers in Kase Tomanaga, fresh off a semifinal appearance in the Big Ten Conference Tournament, which by the way, Jeff, they have made it, so they are eligible for the final four. Versus the Texas A&M Aggies SEC. This is a matchup talked about for all the wrong reasons because Nebraska's AD just took the Texas A&M job and the committee in the men's and women's side decided it would be hilarious to play Nebraska versus Texas A&M in both brackets because that's just purely coincidental. (laughs) It has nothing to do with Trev Alberts leaving Nebraska going to Texas A&M. Nothing at all. So you guys are a bunch of losers. Huskers are winning. Is anybody going to choose against me? I'll give it to you, Nate, because you watched what they just did to your losers last week. Um, so fuck Nebraska. Uh, send their send their bitch asses back to the Big Twelve. Uh, I'm tired of shitty corn stinking up the damn conference. No, that's not. Um, my so yes, <laughs> I'm a salty bastard, and uh, as much as I don't think A and M should have been in the tournament, and it should have been ISU, uh, I'll just take A and M because. Again, spike guy. I'm, spike guy. I'm, yeah. Yeah, Nate, you know what? Like a spike guy. Fuck Nebraska. I'm going to Texas. Oh, oh. You guys are both wrong. It's going to be the yeah. lefty Steph. And Nebraska's got that. Yep. Just Japanese Steph Curry. Silky stroking lefty. Give me that. Nebraska's winning Hell over Texas yeah. A&M. Hell yeah. Oh, Moving yeah. on. Just go ahead, Nate. Go. I, I got to say, though, real quick, just because I was curious and – for no reason that's important at all. But I don't know why I find this funny, but I looked up where Longwood was. Because I, I knew it was in Virginia, but it's in a town called Farmville. And for some reason, that's really funny to me. Hey, Sounds baby. Like a, hey. That's a Facebook game, isn't it? Isn't it? Shout out to Farmersburg, a, baby. Yeah, 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 Farmersburg. Yeah, isn't Farmville a Facebook game? It was at one time. <laughs> <laughs> Fake news. Fake news, bro. Um <laughs> Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah. Oh, bite-sized bikes floating around. I love this comment. 
<laughs> shout out jeff yeah Keep them coming, all those twitter Keep folks them all those twitter folks nobody says, oh here yeah. see poland spring in the chat thank you there we go poland, you are we go. Uh, listen to these folks all right you know poland can, already can... has three brackets filled out she's counting on us and i already told her uh to relay to rely on you three as opposed to me when it comes to making these picks Can't trust so, kevin anything hey yeah, you know would never too, trust me too bad uh it's not uh, <laughs> too bad right it's not, right uh, Next to that. actual uh actual water brand maybe we could get a sponsorship out of that no kidding <laughs> Kev, you are. I, I I like the fact that you are. I'm going to call you uncultured swine from now on. I think that everybody else does. Very that's very fair. fitting. Um, Clout route Tuesdays Sundays. There we go. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, Wisconsin James Madison twelve five. Was James Madison is beaten Michigan State in the Big Ten. I think they're thirty one in three. Wisconsin coming off a loss in the Big Ten title game. Somebody talked me out of James Madison winning this game with ease. Wisconsin got humbled. They're going to get back and beat James Madison, who's frauds. Everyone else is going to pick James Madison, so pick Wisconsin to get an extra point on your bracket. (laughs) I'm three brackets. (laughs) Three brackets. My entire financial future is riding on this. We are your only hope. That is a, for you, Poland Spring, that is a horrifying statement. Best wishes. Horrifying. Nate, are you going to? Yeah, best wishes to you in this trying time. Nate, are you going to choose the James Madison? Are they the Bulldogs? I know that's their mascot. They're the Dukes. The Dukes. James Madison Dukes with a Bulldog mascot. Oh, we get Duke versus the Dukes? I changed mine, guys. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Come on, guys. Nate, are Um, you taking them? The uh, less crappy Duke. Dukes. Um, The the one that nobody will hate, uh, except for Wisconsin fans on – uh thursday or friday whenever they're playing yep. um i'm going i'm going with the dukies to continue to be uh big 10 champions hell yeah so we're all taking the actual dukies over vermont in the next one right hashtag fuck, fuck trevor steinbacher <laughs> you know <laughs> right uh, if so i go as the catamounts are about it apparently on draft if i go up enough on DraftKings by friday uh i'll send some pictures from the game you got to. Uh, um, what was that, Nate? I was going to say, you know, I've seen a lot of comments on on the, you know, college basketball subreddit, just like to browse sometimes. Um, I've seen a lot of people, you know, that have Vermont like flares talk about, you know, maybe offensively this isn't as good of a team um, as, you know, some of these past years upset picks that people have wanted to pick for them, but um, supposedly their defense, you know, again, I, I didn't really check into this, but supposedly they have a much better defensive team compared to some of these, uh, you know, mm-hmm. how did upset picks from the past, you know, that Vermont had. So more of the same. I mean, I, I still comfortably take Duke, but um, I'll do it while plugging my nose and hating life. <laughs> Yeah, in our, in our Duke versus Dukes matchup in the second round, who are we taking? Duke. Yeah, he's, he's got Duke with double O's. Oh yeah, I guess it's I. I would have Duke coming out of here. Which this is always tough. I always have a hard time picking against uh, Vermont. Is one of my favorite lower seeds usually. Whenever mm. they're in the tournament, like well, they're they're a tough out. They could beat anybody on the right night. But uh, I have no faith in Wisconsin. And so if it's going to be Duke versus the Dukes, give me the Blue Devils. As much as mm. it I have a bad taste in my mouth mm. from saying it. Nate, you going with the uh, chalk take here? Yeah, I guess. I am not. I disagree completely. You know, it was a dude on you CBS a, a dog with, a, with a crown. No, it was ESPN today. There's a dude on ESPN on a video I was watching who didn't know what chalk meant. He was on their March Madness preview show. I don't need to know, know that if you're on that chalk show. meant. So like and subscribe. Trevor guys. could have explained it. Trevor would have explained it very well. We appreciate you all for being yeah. here. Like, subscribe, join the Discord. There it is. <laughs> Somebody block his camera right now, please. 
I, I can't do that. The stream deck doesn't do that. I don't know how. Yeah, Kev's got this fancy stream no, deck. Doesn't no, know how to use no, it yet. It. Um, <laughs> next matchup: Texas Tech versus NC State. Who? Won five games in five days to be ACC champs. Shout out Kareem Richardson, one of my former co-workers. And shout out DJ Burns, one of my four players I picked that's made for March, which we'll do after we pick our winner. Is anybody dumb enough to pick against the hottest team in America in NC State right now? Nope. They're going to keep that streak rolling on through, and I can say that confidently because they beat the shit out of my team. Mm-hmm. This is not the Wolfpack team that is winning in the first round. So the Red Ooh. Raiders are going to oh, get some shots. Dang. Hey, okay, Nate. I will tell you what. I had a really hard time picking between NC State and their second round opponent. Give me NC State. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, Jeff. NC, Ooh. Maybe Jeff, Jeff don't know, but Jeff is technically the fifth vote and he took Tech. And DJ Burns might have 38. So NC State through. No, Tech through. Sorry. Um, you guys are wrong, though. Kentucky, Oakland, <laughs> the Horizon League team that Nate is an expert on. He is in his, what, 40th season and made the tournament. Tell us why Oakland's going to win, Nate. Well, Oakland's not going to win because um, – you know, they've got some decent shooters like they, you know, I forget what his name was, um, but he's like a a real stout looking motherfucker, um, but shoots the three ball like nobody's business and always likes to take like guns and holster them after he shoots the three. Every time he would shoot a it three. Sounds like Kevin, was... a rec game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, except it's an elbow. It's a jumper from the elbow. And so, yeah. but, um, but you know, I mean, Oakland, Oakland's got some really good players. Um I'm forgetting what the guy's name is off the top of my head. Um, he had 30 plus points. Um, oh, Trey Townsend, that's right. Um, he um, he had 30 plus points in the uh, Horizon League Championship, and he was he was a force down low, you know, inside the inside the arc. Mm. Um, I just, you know, I think Kentucky is going to handle business. I mean, and that's not a knock against Oakland. You know, if if can, Oakland was playing Illinois or Oakland was playing Baylor or Oakland was well, I probably wouldn't take them against Creighton. But um, I just I just think they're going to kind of run into a wall there. Um, but you know what, Jeff, the Oakland uh, Milwaukee game, the over under was one hundred and fifty one and a half. So, you know, Oakland, oh, Oakland can get, yeah, um, Oakland can get it up with the best of them. So. You know, the tempo thing isn't going to be really an issue for them. Mm -hmm. um, so we're taking Kentucky okay. there. 7-10 uh, match at Florida versus Boise State, Colorado. Florida lost a big piece, their big man compound fracture in the SEC title game. Uh, best of luck to him on his recovery. It's a gruesome injury. Do not go watch it. Uh, first four matchup, Boise State, Colorado. Another Mountain West team getting underseated, in my opinion. Uh, anybody got any preference on this one? I've not watched Florida a ton, and I've watched Colorado and Boise less. So I'm going to go Colorado to beat Boise State, and then I'm also going to take Colorado to beat UF mm -hmm. as well. I respect it. They got a really good point guard. I'm with Keebler on that one, actually. If if Boise State beats Colorado, then I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I No matter who wins this game, I don't have them beating Marquette. Uh, fingers crossed. But, yeah, give me Colorado to take Florida down. Kind of like it, too. Nate, you on board with you on this squad ride? I'm taking, you know, Boise, and they really should install some uh... – Blue hardwood. Well, I knew it. I was like, they will yeah. never yeah. think against the blue turf, dude. I agree. Um, so, so we'll do this. We'll do squad ride. It, it, we're taking the ten. Whoever is whoever wins that first four games, beating Florida and moving on. That's what we're deciding here. Yeah, so we're all, and we're I refuse. Yeah. I refuse to pick Florida ever again, considering <laughs> they cost me fifteen hundred dollars based on whatever the fuck happened against Vanderbilt last month. So no. Oh, Florida I forgot can, about that. Yeah. Yeah. Whoops. So shout Florida out to Discord Florida. that was posted there. Whoopsies. Um, I don't know, Kev. Do we have a Discord link? I don't even know. This is your show. Y'all fire it off in the chat. 
Yeah, if I'll you want to hop in the Discord, come on down. All kinds of sports talk in there all over the place. Like, subscribe. Bottom of the bracket, 2-15 matchup. Marquette, Western Kentucky. Steve Lutz takes Western Kentucky to the tournament in his first season at Western after coming over from Texas and Corpus Christi. However, Marquette coming out of the Big East is the two. Uh, big question is, will Tyler Kolick play? He missed the Big East tournament. He's been out for about two weeks. Um, if he plays, they are very, very dangerous. Is anybody going to take the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky over Marquette? You know, I got a I got a soft spot for the Hilltoppers, um, but Marquette has climbed mountains, so this isn't going to really says be a yes challenge for him. With an asterisk, I don't know why he put an asterisk. Now I'm I'm intrigued. Marquette, um, Marquette's also finally going to be healthy, so. I think Kolek's coming back too. I think that's why he's been they sat him for so yeah. long. What wasn't wasn't like some unfounded rumors that he couldn't like read or something like that. <laughs> there was somebody on Marquette that like people were saying he couldn't that's like Kev. read. That's actually Kev. <laughs> yes, yeah, Jeff says true. he will play. He'll play. Yeah. So we're going Marquette over the in that one. Um yep. I think we're about to have a battle here. But Keeb walked away, so we lost. I know he's going to take Duke to go to the Final Four. See, now I see he's sitting right back down. Duke, 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 Duke. Yeah, Duke, there it Duke. is. Who are we taking to go to the Final Four out of this region, boys? I'll go last. Who? Oh, okay. That Kev's one's got to go first. Actually, um, Kev's second because we got a Duke reference. Yeah, we got Duke in there already. <sighs> am I... Am I nuts for still leaning towards Houston here, boys? Like, am I have I, I completely lost the plot? I mean, they have the hardest game in America when they have to face K Sanity in round two. The Japanese stuff, Curry. That's right. That's right. Um, I like uh, you know. I I think I lean towards Houston too, though. Like, I know they just got smoked into oblivion, but God, they've been so good all year. I love another Kentucky Marquette matchup potentially. Um, That's very so. Fun. I, like you could, and I, this feels like a cop out. This is uh, speaking of the clout route. This feels like me hopping back up on my fence. But uh, honestly, any one of these first four seeds, if I sat and listened to you long enough, I'd you could probably you talk me into uh, maybe not Duke as much, but you know Marquette. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm pretty high on Kentucky. I think honestly, I feel like there's so much talent on this Kentucky team that they have to at least get into the sweet 16 mm -hmm. right like uh, anything else is a major letdown they need to because it's been a while since they've done anything in the tournament nate let's hear it buddy so i you know i in one bracket i picked houston and in another i picked kentucky while mm -hmm. i've held my nose i really don't want our buddy sean baker to ever be happy with sports <laughs> but, you know what i i think i think i'm gonna be holding my nose and picking you know big blue out of out of the south regional we have a mixed bag here we've got two Ooh. houston's a dukey and a kentucky I, in case i didn't make it clear enough duke duke duke, duke, duke. <laughs> however this is a democracy and there is two houston so houston fair, in two of my brackets i do have houston beating duke so i will for the sake of for the sake of the team yeah, I'll go Houston. I'm fine with that. I picked Houston in a bracket. I just wanted to be a contrarian and kind of get after a, a old mm -hmm. Sean B a little bit. Oh, you got to. So, boys, down to the nitty-gritty here. We've got UConn versus, we said Arizona, right? Yeah. Caleb Love game on one side, Houston versus Tennessee on the other. Let's let's make our picks. Are we taking Yukon or Arizona? I think that should be a sweep across the board probably. It's it's Yukon for me. It's Yukon for me as well in like four of my seven brackets. So UConn I genuinely is, think Oh, go ahead, Nate. Yukon is going to get a fresh, you know, fresh shave on their heavy coat and come into Sandland and Take care of business. <laughs> more say this easy. guy hates sand more than Anakin Skywalker. But easy one for us. I'm going with you, boys. I think UConn has a real chance to be the first team since the fighting Joachim Noah's to go back to back. And uh yeah, give me UConn. So we've got 
one of our national title guys. The other one would be Houston versus Tennessee. Who do Big 12 versus SEC. What are we doing, boys? What do we got here? I'm going to go Houston on that one. If they beat Duke, they're going to the championship game. So. Exactly. Well, fair enough. Then you can say you lost to the title or the team in the title game. Uh, is anybody taking Dalton Connect? <sighs> no, I'm going Houston. This one's been tough for me. I'd, I'd, you know, much as I want to keep it interesting, I, I'm sticking with Houston. Nate. So, for me, it's a matter of. Is barbecue better than moonshine? And right now I'm going to take some moonshine, go <laughs> dance on Rocky Top, and watch Tennessee go to the title game. Woo, Nate, hot take. Let's However, go. I'm trying not to get drunk on a Monday night, Nate. I want barbecue right now. So three to one, we're taking Houston. Again, democracy here. Ooh. But I do like the Dalton Connect one, so I, I will I will give you credit for being different. So that gives us UConn versus Houston, one versus one. Real chalky here in the title game. Yes, bite size bikes. I don't know if you guys saw oh, this. Houston no. make Drake a custom jersey stock is down. Oh, I will. I'm I picking. I immediately regret this decision. Yeah, I saw the I saw the picture. I am going to stand by UConn. Repeat national title. Yep. I think they're Lock like, it in. I think they're like plus four fifty too, which is insane value. Yeah. Which follow Keebs, he's uh he's hitting it good right now. That's yeah. right. Between him and Trev over on bitesizesports.com, you know, we mm -hmm. got some good got some good betting going on. Nate, do you have any arguments here? You didn't want you Houston in the final anyway. They're plus three sixty, sorry. Cool. Still pretty good. Still pretty you know, good. I mean I'm gonna use another food reference here. In in Connecticut, you've got the you know, New Haven pizza. They did is the home of the original place of the first hamburger. Oh, on the other hand, you've got some nice brisket. I think brisket wins out here. I'll take Houston in this matchup. Oh, he, he gets his barbecue, folks. He gets his barbecue. <laughs> he refuses. I think we're not unanimous, but the majority says we're going UConn as the title winner. Bite size sports, lock it in. It will be tweeted out. We have chosen UConn as our title winner. That's right. Although there is some there is some discrepancies there at the end. So we are going with UConn to repeat as national title winners. Before we hop off, boys, I've got four videos we're going to show. I've got four guys, okay, that are made for March. Okay, and I apologize to Nate right out the gates. On <laughs> because... By the end of this weekend, people are going to know who this man is. This is Casey Tomanaga for Nebraska. Got it going. Absolutely killed oh. the Can you guys hear the sound through it? It's not coming through my own. Yeah. Look at this man. Look at this man. These are all Indiana highlights, by the way. I found this on Twitter. I apologize. By the shoe. Step back. Oh, that little quick release, too, with the drop. My goodness. He is the, they call him the Japanese Steph Curry. He wears 30 for Steph. It's his favorite player. Tobinaga stopped and started again. Can't be, he's got to be five. This, that one's my favorite one. Yeah, in the post. The, off the cut. Yeah. He will hurt you. He loves to so I apologize to Nate, yep. but Casey is going to be a household name after this weekend. Ooh. Now I've got to just don't change anything, Kev. I got to pop up a different tab here. Second guy on my made for March segment is the one and only DJ Big Daddy Burns Ooh. from North Carolina State. I'm going to pop this full. He won most valuable player in the ACC last weekend. Uh, we're just going to show you. Does anybody, Keebler, have you seen this man play? You know who this is? If he's on NC State, I had to see him play, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, that's right. The Dukies. He is the, <laughs> he might be the, 
biggest man in America. Go Look at this man. Look at him. Seventeen thousand dribbles. Look at him beat up they coach. They got Jessica Ventura on color commentary. Davis is not in the game. I can't hear it on my end, so I turn it on. Like, oh, he went with the hook shot, Gorilla. If the, there's DJ. Look at our guy. I don't know why. Why do we got a rebound? Out there. Come on. Rebound better, right? You got to love that. What I is this, NBA that. 2K? That's when you know you're not any good. And he is. Look at this man. Look at him. Mid-range jump. compared himself to Zach Randolph? Yes, this is the man who okay. compared himself to Zach Randolph. Yeah. He's got one or two more Everybody clips here. I can see it. Tennessee got run. Duke Look got at this man. This event by Although, down. So you know, Zebo was in better shape. It's an awful. Okay, these highlights are no good. So this one, let's see if we can get one good over here and then we'll be done. Okay, who made it? Okay. Yeah, this is better. Here we go. There we go. Get him down low where he belongs. Look at that passing ability. this. We'll take that. Yeah, so we'll – Too bad uh, too, too bad we can't get a, a DJ Zach Eady matchup here. Oh, my God, mm. that would be so much fun. Um, next up in my Made for March series is Nate's boy, his pick to go to the title game, Dalton Connect at Tennessee. If you guys haven't seen this man, he is stellar. Number one is up for Some of his clips from his uh, 39 point really game last Here's month against Auburn. Connects from three, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that's why you get paid the big bucks, Kev. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he could drop 40 in a game and return it very yeah. quickly. Oh, I, like, I like the term NASCAR cut. Nate, how you feel about that? Again. I mean, Nate, I, you know, Nate's guy. How good is he, man? You know, NASCAR you was in Tennessee that, not too far from Knoxville this weekend. Cut, so. Running into a turn like that. You're going to see Nate and Dalton is, connect your yeah. Just you come out and he's stellar down, transfer from Northern Colorado having a hell of a year. Give me one more, and then we'll move on. Oh, a zone. What are you going to do, run a zone against him? That's so stupid. Look at that. Come on, guys. You know better. Zones are for losers. Bold strategy, Cotton. And then my last made-for-March guy is the one and only Baylor Shireman from Creighton. Probably a second-team All-American. Get this popped up here. We'll go full screen. These are his highlights from last year's tournament. So he's already been there doing this. Hit. Hit. He's got a weird haircut right now, too. Baylor trying to make their first Final Four ever. Or Creighton, as I said, Baylor. Trying to lead him there. The old 50, the old 55. Uh, no, DJ Burns is not white. <laughs> Alexander, a clean look. Matt Alaco returns. Well defended just then. It's our all Larry Bird team. Jeff. Yeah, 100%. I would, have, I would have picked Robbie Avila, but they fucking left him out of the tournament. So, yes, Jeff. Call me out. John Stockton. You know, you, listen, you, I gave everybody the opportunity to add to this list and nobody gave no me anybody, didn't. Jeff. I posted no it in didn't. the Discord. I said, does anybody have any made for March players? Nate, do you have one? We have time to pop one. You got there, one. There, yeah. yeah there uh, we, we will go with a um, old pal from the 2021 tournament. Um, I'm curious to see on a better team what Max Abmus will do. Oh. Jeff, I think two were white, one was Good black, ball. one was Japanese. So we had yeah. And you know I love uh my boy Armando. I can't believe it's not Bacot Bacot. How do you pronounce it? It looks like bacon. Bacot. Bacot. Uh, I, thought, I thought it was Bacot. Bacot. It is Bacot. I keep we had a play on our team back in the day, it was Cam Bacot, so I keep saying You're it. My boy Bacot. Blue. Here, let's just just for so it doesn't feel like I just own this, which I did. John L. Davis. We're popping up. Spectrum Nate's got the name that like Gus Johnson was born to. John L. Davis. Texas Louisville oh, earlier in the season, which this is. And it was just tight. It's not good for Texas. Nate's boy right there. Game winner. Game winner. And Louisville, that would be the last time they were 500 all year. <laughs> So, you know, and uh, an honor. Do you love John L. Davis? 
uh, honorable mention one I have is if Oakland has any chance to upset Kentucky, uh, Jack Golke, uh, who's the guy I was describing earlier, shooting threes and holstering his pistols or whatever, uh, he'll have to be he'll have to make like six or seven threes for that to be a possibility. Yep. But you're telling me there's a chance. Telling me there's a chance. Fellas, we did it. Hour and a half in. We are going with UConn to win the whole thing. Trevor says Baycott is good, but March is all about guard play, and RJ Davis is cold. Old Mighty Mouse is very we agree very on good. the guard play. Yes, sir. Jared, Jared McCain has been red hot. I just want to uh, point that out. Uh, <laughs> where's he playing? Duke. Oh, Duke, yeah. Oh. Jeff, I love that Nate went on a limb to pick a kid who scored 3,100 points. <laughs> and Sean oh, made it. That limb is not very strong. 3,100 points strong. And Sean pops Ooh. in. Sean, there was no love for UK on, on here. They were cheering against you very hard if you missed that segment. Um, not me, Sean. Don't listen let's to go, me. Let's go around the horn here, fellas. Keebler, where can they find you outside this show? Right there. Basically it. And then – is OG going to get healthy? I fucking hope so. And then you can also find me sometimes Tuesdays on Necessary Roughness and then every Thursday um, on the Browns. Nate, where can the fine feathered friends find you at? I think this comment was for you, and I think you're flipping our our, our friend Sean off. You can uh, find me driving to bumfuck Ohio to go fuck with Sean. But no, for real, <laughs> you can uh, <laughs> You uh, you can uh, find me doing some racing content just here and there and seeing me at some live events like the Horizon League uh, Championship. That's right. Kev, I know you take the longest, so mm, the floor yeah, is we'll yours, get, bud. We'll get through this one as quickly as we can. Shout out to the Clout crew that got in here today, Tuesdays and Sunday nights from 6 to 8 on the Clout route with my boy Danny. Go check it out. Also, of course, Wednesday nights with James Hanshot first. We got some new content coming over on that Dweeb channel, by the way. So go ahead and subscribe there. We've got a Come bunch down. of stuff coming. Uh, but other than that, as I've mentioned previously, now that we have our own website, bitesizesports.com, all of my NCAA tournament coverage and all of our NBA draft coverage will now be on our website, no longer on Last Word on Sports. So go ahead and check us out, bitesizesports.com. We have uh, betting articles coming from Trev as well, so a mm -hmm. bunch of stuff going on there. And there's some other stuff I could tell you about, but uh, we'll just save that for later. Carnage Unleashed Wednesday nights right before we mm -hmm. Carnage Media by Side Sports. All right, James, I'm done. I, I'm tapping out. Not too bad. Pretty good. Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, yeah, come on over if you like Star Wars. Come check us out Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Kev, is there a Thursday night bounce this week, or are we off because of the tournament? <laughs> Dude, the Zanga got me right there. Are we off on Thursday? We can be off on Thursday. I'm I am. I am. I am out. I think we're off on Thursday, so this might be a Monday show during the tournament. Thursday, yeah. maybe it might be a wildfire, fire from the hip. If if we can, we might do a yeah. bonus special Thursday. But let's just consider ourselves off. It is a holiday after all, a national holiday. So we'll so, be watching college basketball. We assume you um, will. Be too. My MSN messenger says busy starting Wednesday. There's Wednesday night to Sunday night. It's just busy. Oh, the Zang can't get a hold really of me. me. Um, Trevor, <laughs> thank you for the, uh, Wednesday. Are his betting model? His picks for Wednesday will be up on bitesizesports.com. He will have those up. I'm sure. I need to enter those, and he's probably mad at me because I haven't done that yet. I didn't do anything for conference tournament week. He did it all himself. Trev, Jeff loves you. Um, Jeff, my aim was. <laughs> Little Hustler 701. And on that note, thank you guys in the chat, all of you. Jeff, Trevor, Poland Springs, Sean, Bite Size Vikes. Uh, did I miss anybody else in there? Lid was in there. Uh, I saw Scott Carlin in there early. We uh, appreciate you guys. We will be back probably next Monday, it sounds like. Uh, we were up. Kev just pointed it out. We hit 142 live viewers, which is the most we've ever had on this show. So thank you guys for coming down. Um, go Huskers. Go Kase. Um, do not go IU. And then go all of our picks, especially UConn, because that would be really awkward if our national champion went out on the first week. And go Duke for Keebler and Trav. I'll give them a shout out. We will see you guys next week. Take care. Thank you again, all of you. Sports. 
Are you looking for an energy boost without the jitters? Let our friends at W Energy help you with their fantastic selection of flavors. Just visit www.w.gg and use the code BITESIZESPORTS at checkout for 10% off your order total. Again, that is www.dubby.gg. Code BITESIZESPORTS. <laughs> 